Hey, 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 this is your girl. This is your social worker. This is your life coach, Tonetta Clay, and I want to welcome y'all to this video. This video, and this is the beginning video in the series, talking about letting go, how to free yourself. This is what the entire series is going to be about, y'all. So like I said, I want to welcome you all to this introductory video, talking about letting go. Just to give you a little bit of background, what it means to let go, and I guess how that may look in your life, I guess I put it that way as well. So like I said, definitely listen in. Letting go. When I looked it up online, the definitions, it was two definitions, actually. Um, the, well, from the dictionary definitions. One was um, to let go, to allow someone or something to escape or go free. Number two, relinquish one's grip on someone or something. Like I said, that's definitely what it's talking about when letting go. We're releasing all those triggers, all those feelings, all that resentment, all that bitterness, all that anger on someone or something that has kept that story inside of our head playing as, as playing like we're the victim, I guess I put it that way. When we know that we're not the victim, we are always the victor in those situations. We're the ones who, of course, made it through the situations out on the other end, and we're trying to get our lives on a better track, I guess I put it that way as well. So like I said, we're always the victor. But like I said, letting go of those things that you have a grip on that's, that's constantly holding you back, and that's keeping you from living your dream, from whether living that dream means to have a better relationship or have a more sexual relationship or to have uh, more friendships, whatever it is, or to start that business or to start that clothing line, whatever it is, to travel around the world, if that's what you want to do, whatever that grip is that that, that that thing is holding on you to prevent those things, that's what this is talking about, letting go to release those things so that you can flow smoothly into your dream, into your goals, so you won't have to worry about anything else, y'all. Like I said, that's what I mean by letting go. Now, I know I, I will tell y'all some stories, I'm sure, as this series go on, about some things that I've had to let go of as well, but I want to let you know that you're not alone. I have had to let go of a lot of things, people, places, and things. We just moved here to Arizona two weeks ago, not even two weeks ago, actually. So I had to let go of my, own, my old hometown where I had been for the last 45 years. I've never lived anywhere else. This is my first time living somewhere else. So I had to let go of a lot of the things that was going on within that as well. So like I said, and relationships, divorce, marriages, all types of things. Like I said, you're not the only one who's, ha who's having to let go. I may be a few steps ahead of you. That's why I'm able to teach this to you so that you can, of course, pick this up, get this seed that I'm planting, and to, of course, start cultivating it so that it, so that it can start germinating in your life, creating the goals in your life that you actually want, creating the dreams in your life that you actually want, creating the businesses in your life that you actually want, the love, the relationships, the sex, all those things. Like I said, I know those things are important to all of us. So like I said, definitely with letting go, that's how you free yourself from all, from all the grips and all the holds, all the anger, all the resentment, all the bitterness that those things have held on to you for the last how many, however old you are. I'm 45, so I guess I would say 45 years. Whatever age you are, just, just apply that to your life. Like I said, we don't want to keep being stuck in a situation where we can't where we feel that we can't get ahead because we're holding on to all these traumas and dramas of the past. At some point, you have to let that go in order to move ahead, y'all, in your life, just to let you know that. So let's go ahead and get on to it. And before I get into the everything, I want to make sure that I read this quote to you all. It's by jo Jack Cornfield. It says, to let go does not mean to get rid of. To let go means to let be. When we let be with compassion, things come and go on their own. That was powerful to me, and I had to make sure that I read that to y'all. Because like I said, getting into this series of letting go, I'm sure it's going to trigger some of you, if not all of you, with some of the things that may have happened to you in your past or things that you didn't realize that you, need, that you needed to let go of in order to move ahead. Like I said, I want to make sure that I, of course, like I said, set the foundation for this <clears throat> because I know this is not going to be an easy conversation we're having. So the first thing. Just to let you know, because I know I didn't realize this until several years. Well, I don't know how long ago, maybe like 10 years ago or so, some along those lines. But I had to realize that holding on to the pain does not fix anything and it keeps you stuck. I Like I said, you, you have to realize that. I can tell you that and I can plant this seed right now in this video, but it may not even germinate until days, months, weeks, decades later. But just know that holding on to pain doesn't fix anything. All it's going to do is just keep you stuck. 
holding on to that pain, the pain that, that I mean when I wrote this down, the pain of being sexually abused or sexual tra sexually traumatized, the pain of being in a domestic violence situation or viewing that situation, the pain of being rejected all the time, the pain of being cheated on in a, in a in relationship or marriage, the pain of any kind of pain that you can think of, something that caused you hurt. Just keep in mind that holding on to that, sweeping that up under the carpet is not going to get you anywhere at all. It's going to get you, well, I take the back, it's going to get you somewhere. It's going to get you a life that's full of a lot of triggers. You being so, so triggered by different things that, that somebody may say, a name, a smell, uh, some kind of action somebody, some, some, somebody may do. You may flip out, go off, curse them out, wherever the case may be. Can't control your behavior, those kind of things. That's the That's what pain will do to you. Pain will also help you not find love again. If you were hurt in a past relationship, whether it's physically or mentally, pain will keep you from finding love again because you're holding on to that pain. That's what I mean by allowing someone or something to escape or go free. Letting those things go free, you can find love again in your life. But you have to want to do that. And you want you and you want and you want to have to and you have to do the work in order for that to happen as well. But like I said, just keeping in mind that holding on to pain doesn't fix anything. It will fix the life that you have. Everything that you've done up, to, up until today that you're viewing this video, you've created that life. It may not be the things in your childhood. I'd say from age 18 on, you've created the life that, that you see that you have this in this moment, today, at this day and time. Whatever day and time it is that you're viewing this. That's the life that you created, but it doesn't always have to be that way. I had to realize several years ago that the life that I had actually back in 2000, hold on, 17, 18, one of those years, I had to realize that the life I had, had up until that point, I created that damn life. The life of me being in a relationship for seven and a half, almost eight years, unhappy, I created that. I may not have had every 100% to do with that, but I had something, it takes two to tango. I had something to do with that, the way I was feeling at that present moment in time. I had something to do with me finding the job that I was in that I was, uh, that I was unhappy with as well. We don't realize all the things that we create in our lives. It could be big steps like that, or it could be small steps, not, not saying no to somebody. When you have something going on in your life, you want to get these things done, but here comes Tom, Dick, and Harry, or Susan, jo Joanne, and, and Nicole want to have you take them to the store or do something for them, but you have no idea how to say no, and you stop your dream or stop your plans in order to accommodate them. That's another thing that holds you back. We have to realize that those things will keep you stuck. Like I said, those things where you're going through life and you're trying to, of course, stuff all this pain up under the carpet, you're not fixing anything. It's going to create more of the same situation that you already have. So like I said, at some point, we have to realize, and until you realize that you've created the, the situation, the daytime that you're looking at this, whatever, whenever, whenever that is, that you created your life up until that point, you will not start to change that. But when you do realize that, that you created your life today, right now in this moment, then you, and especially if you don't like it, then you'll start changing things. At some point, we all get sick and tired of being 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 sick and tired of the same stuff that goes on. Love, relationships, job, business, whatever it is, we all get sick and tired of doing that. Whether it's living in the same place for you all your life, you get sick and tired of that at some point. Well, some people do. I can't say everybody, but some people do. And like I said, it's not until that you realize that you created your life up until this point that you're sick and tired and sick and tired of it. And that's when you begin to, of course, stop holding on to that pain and start letting those things go. Because like I said, holding on to that pain does not do anything but keep you stuck. And the way that you let go of that pain, like I said, I'll get more into that in this series. But like I said, it's, it is not as hard as you think. Some folks may tell you that is, oh my God, your life is going to go upside down, which it could. I don't, I don't know. I have no idea what your situation is. But in order for you to let something go, that just simply you changing your mindset and perspective, saying that this is not going to bother me and affect me as much as it has been every single day until it starts affecting you less. That's all that is. And it could take a day. It could take a week. It could, could take a month or a year. I have no idea what your life is like. For me, some of those things took a day. Some of those things took a week for me. Some of those things took a few months for me. It just depends on the person and what you have, how hard you're willing to push yourself. And it's all up here in the mindset. Just keep that in mind. The next thing, 
I know a lot of times we hold on to things because we feel that those things created our, our identities. Like I was just saying, just realize that if you're holding on to painful experiences because you don't know who you'd be without those feelings and those experiences, you are more than those feelings and those experiences. Just know that. Some people do hold on to, I, I held on to a story for a long time, me being the victim and this story and that story and all these things that was going on. I had to let go of those things. And I had to realize that that was not me. That those things, yes, they created me. They created the strength that I have. They created the tenacity that I have. They created the confidence that I have, but they were not 100% me at all. They are not part of my identity. Meaning that I'm not always, I'm not going through life saying that I'm an abused, sexually abused child for every single day. That is, yes, that, that, that may have happened to me back when I was under five years old, but that's not who I am for the rest of my life. Those messes, those traumas, those dramas that we have in our life, they create us to a certain extent, yes. They will give you that drive to move forward. They will give you that confidence. They will give you that tenacity to, of course, hang on. They will give you that self-discipline in order for you to complete your goals. They will help you create your character. But that does not mean that you have to go throughout your entire life being in victim mode, saying that I'm a sexually abused child to everybody that you meet. And that's how you live your life as a child in the shell still can't come out of the shell because you're so scared to. That does not create your entire identity. That may be a part of who you are and a part of what happened to you in the story that you can tell and the lessons like I can teach the lessons that I learned now. Yes, but that does not. That has not. I mean, that is not my entire identity. I'm Tonetta. I have a whole lot of different facets to me. And you do too, whatever your name is, just substitute your name. I am whoever you are. You have a whole different, a whole, a, a whole array of things that, that you are in your life. From family to relationships, to job, to business, to everything, to creativity, to hobbies, whatever it is. You are more than just sexual abuse. You are more than just domestic violence. You are more than just sexual trauma. You are more than just a kid who was picked on in school. You are more than just that. I know a lot of times, like I said, are you holding on to that painful experience because you don't know who you'd be without those feelings? Do you know who you are, who you'd be without the, the abuse, the traumas that, that you suffered? I had to figure that out as well. I had to find out that I was more than just those things. I was a powerful person and you are, you are as well. Like I said, we tell ourselves all types of stories all the time, but that those stories do not make, they, they, they can make or break you. But like I said, they're not your entire life at all. You can always change that story at, at any point that you feel like it. I'm not saying lie to yourself, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you can always make yourself look like the victor in that situation, the powerful person in that situation, that you were able, this happened to you, but you were able to move forward regardless. That's what I mean. Like I said, we have to start thinking about those things. Who would you be if that situation that you've been telling yourself that you're the victim in this, this entire time throughout your entire life, telling everybody that this is why you act this way. You're going to keep doing this this way because this is how you are. Who would you be without you telling yourself that story? I do this because I feel like it because that's who I am. Who do you do? Do you really know who you are? That's the that's the question that I have for you and that you have to start journaling about writing about and trying to figure out about your life. Regardless as to what happened to you, who are you? Those feelings, those experiences, yes, they 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 they, they created your life to, to some extent, but you have to continue creating your life, lessening those triggers. That's what that's what it means by letting go. Lessening those triggers so they won't affect you so much. So that you won't get so um upset when somebody mentions so and so's name. Or that you won't start crying when you see somebody on TV getting sexually abused or, or hit domestic violence. You have to start living your life to the person that you are today. Not the person and the child that you were five, six years, I mean, at five or six years old, 10 years old when these things were happening to you. That's what it means by they are not a part of your identity. We make them a part of our identity because, like I said, the story that we tell ourselves, the story that we tell others why we're stuck in the situation that we're in, why we're still on Section 8 today or why we're still in a low paying job today or why we still can't create that business or why we still can't find love today. We'll tell that story, but we're not going to tell the story about who we are at all without those experiences. Those experiences may have happened to you, but who truly are you? 
You're not a sexually abused child for the uh, until you die. You, it may have happened to you that 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 one how many ever experiences it was. Yes, but that does not create your entire identity. You are more than just that sexually abused child or that abused wife or whoever you used to be, or that prostitute, whatever it was the drug user, whoever you whoever it was. You're more than that. If that's a story that you keep telling yourself to keep you stuck, that is on you. Like I said, that's definitely on you. And that's what I meant when I, when I was talking about the last little thing about you and me and all of us. How we like to, of course, stay stuck and holding on to those painful experiences. We have to learn how to let that go. Letting those experiences go, meaning that you, you, you will never forget them. I'm pretty sure that I never forgot anything. Letting go means to, like I said, lessen those triggers so that, we, that so that when you smell a certain kind of cologne or hear a certain sound or hear somebody being abused or seeing or see, see it on TV or somebody's telling you that they've been sexually abused yesterday or whatever day it was that you won't break down, get upset, run out, all these kind of things that won't affect you in that kind of way. That's what I mean by letting go so that you can talk like I'm talking to these things about you now without crying and all upset and getting offended and all these kind of things. That's what it means by lessening your triggers and letting go of those behaviors and those experiences. You'll never forget them. You will never forget them in your life, I'm sure. But they just won't affect you as much as they had been. Once you start working through your feelings and your emotions surrounding the things that, that's happened to you. And like I said, all those things that happened to you, yes, that they, they happen, but they're not your 100% identity. Just keep that in mind. The next thing. One way to move on from the past is to stop investing in certain outcomes when it comes to dealing with people. And in short, what this means is that since I've been cheated on in my marriage, I was cheated on. He has several kids or whatever the case may be. That means that the next partner that I met, I cannot look at that same partner as he's going to do the same thing to me as my past partner had done. Not expecting the same exact outcome. If that's the case, I would have never found love like I have now. Everybody's not going to abuse me. Everybody's not going to. And you have to realize that too. Nobody, everybody, everybody's not going to abuse you. We have sometimes a wall set up and I had a big thick wall. I guess I put it that way in front of all the hurt, all the embarrassment, all those types of things that, that dealt with cheating. Back in, in my first marriage, I had to realize that I could not, in, in order for me to, of course, love again and to find a better relationship, I cannot hold everybody to the exact same expectation. If that's the case, I would have never found another or I would have never been in another in, in another relationship at all. I would still be single today. I'm not, but I'm in, in a loving relationship now, supportive relationship now. We have awesome communication. I would have never been able to find that if I looked at this guy that doing the same thing as my past partners have done. That That's what it means by letting go of or stop investing in and letting go of the certain outcomes when it comes to dealing with people. Everybody, we have to realize this. I know it's going to be hard for you to hear this, but everybody is going to break your heart at some point. Everybody's going to, you're going to expect this out of somebody. So everybody's going to let you down at some point, even yourself. Nobody is perfect. I say that all the time. Nobody is perfect. Everybody's going to let you down. Once you hear this, I'm sure you're going to be like, oh, no, they're not. Yes, they are. I'm telling you that to get you ready for it. I put it that way. We have to go through life sometimes holding that in the back of our minds that nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. Somebody's going to break a promise to us. Somebody's going to tell us no at some point. They're going to make us feel bad or whatever it is. Somebody's going to reject us at some point. That is a given in life. No life is perfect where you're not going to have anything happen. And if somebody's telling you that nothing's happened in their whole life and they've had a perfect life, I'm sure, I'm sure they're lying to you. Like I said, everybody, not everybody in your life is going to let you down, but throughout your life, you're going to have all these similar experiences. Somebody's going to tell you no. Somebody's going to tell you that they don't like you or they are. They cheat on you or whatever the, the situation may be. Somebody's going to let you down at some point and break a promise at some point. And I'm not telling you to think negatively. No, but this is a part of reality and this is a part of life. Nobody is perfect, including myself. So that's what I mean by. Letting go of those certain outcomes when, you, when you're when you dealing with people. Holding folks to a higher regard than you hold yourself, that's going to always let you down. You know what you do. You, you know that you never cheat on anybody or whatever the case may be. Other folks may not even have that kind of character at all. But you have to be 
I can't say smart enough, but you have to understand. Well, I guess it is smart enough or you have to realize you have to be wise enough. That's the word I'm looking for in order to, of course, discern that to figure out who's for you and who's not for you. I guess I put it that way. We know the people who are most times who are not for us. We know we know the folks when we first well, when I first meet somebody, I can kind of tell whether this person is going to be supportive or not, whether this person is going to be honest or not. You can always tell those character traits. You can always, at least I can always, I, I can say that for myself. I can't say it for everybody else. Maybe that's something that I'll teach y'all about as far as discernment as well. So I know people need that in order to have, have to discern when somebody's lying to you, when somebody's not being truthful to you, when somebody's not being faithful to you. We want to, of course, look past those red flags. You cannot do that when you deal with people. That's what I'm telling you. At some point in your life, people are going to let you down. Break a promise. Like I said, all those high expectations that you have for others, you can have it for yourself. But I would say do not go into every relationship that you have having high, high expectations for people. See what they do. Learn, see their actions. Hear what they say. Not, well, not just hear what they say, but see what they do as well. The actions always speak louder than words when it comes to discernment and seeing how people are going to be in your life, in your life and how they're going to treat you in, their, in your life. So like I said, one way to move from the past all those things that are that was going on that's hurt you, all those types of things, is to stop investing in certain outcomes when it comes to dealing with people. Everybody's not going to be the same thing that you had in the past. But you also have to realize that everybody's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Go into the, into the relationship like this quote I read in the beginning of this video. To let go does not mean to get rid of. To let go means to let be. When we let be with compassion, Things come and go on their own. Empathy and compassion is what we need, y'all. And love as well. But when you're letting things be and not trying to control everything or not giving everything high expectations, things can come and go out of your life with, 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 with a lot more ease than when you're trying to hold on to things, force things, control things. I did that a lot, a whole lot. I'm still having to work through, the, through, that, through all that control. I did that a lot, and that's what caused a lot of heartbreak in my life, I guess I put it that way. Heartache and heartbreak with people that I dated and those that I, of course, had friendships with, all those types of things as well. I had to realize that, and you have to realize that too. And there's one more thing. Like I said, this is the introduction. I know it's some heavy stuff in this one as well, but this is the introduction to the series about letting go and how to free yourself. Like in Vogue says, free your mind. And the rest will follow. That's exactly what they're talking about. That's exactly what they're talking about, y'all. If y'all have no idea who In Vogue is, In Vogue was an 80s group that, that sang that song, Free Your Mind. I'm sure you can look it up on YouTube now and find that song and listen to it. Let it sink in, y'all. Let it sink in. Now, the last thing I want, like I said, I want to read y'all another. This is a lengthy kind of quote, but like I said, it's going to fit in. You're going to understand everything I just talked to y'all about. This is going to help you understand that a lot better. I guess I put it that way. And this quote is actually coming from where I look at my notes from the thought catalog. I found this one online, y'all. So check this out. Like I said, this hit me. This struck me. This sent some tingles all down my body when I heard this. Like I said, you have got to let this sink in as well. Letting go means you have lived. It means you have tried. It means you have felt something real. It means you have gave even if you have not received. It means you've been open. It means that you've cried and that you smiled. It means that you have fell hard, but that you rose high. Letting go means you have been loved and it means that you have loved. Letting go means you, you experience magic in this life, even if it was for a while. Like I said, that was an awesome quote, y'all. Like I said, you, you definitely have to let that thing in. Like I said, letting go means a lot of things. And this is the, the epitome of what it means to let go. Like I said, that you've been through these things and that you're able to move past them as best as you can. And like I said, that's what this entire series is going to be about. So make sure that you tune into the next one. Like I said, or, or click the next video, I guess I put it that way, in the series catalog so that you can check out the next video talking about letting go. Like I said, this was just the intro, y'all. I know it was heavy. I know it may have triggered some of you, if not all of you, but I had to do that in order for you to, of course, realize what's going on in your life, why it's happening, how it was created, and how you can move past it and let it go so that you're going to live a happier, 
better life, I guess I put it that way. So again, I want to say thank you all for tuning in to this um, introductory series, Letting Go and How to Free Yourself. I'm Tanetta Clay, your certified life coach, your social worker. I'm here to, of course, inspire you to think bigger and to empower you to become who you are. I'll see y'all on the next episode, y'all. Take care.